Hello, and in today's video, we're going to look at how we can call a subflow from a client side script in ServiceNow. Hello, and welcome back to Service Nerd. So, in today's video, we're going to look at how we can call a subflow using a client side script, which is a follow on from another video I've done, which is how you can call a subflow from a server side script. So, go and check that out. I'll put one of those annoying boxes up in the top right or left, whichever it is. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you everyone that subscribed so far. If you're new around here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Smash the bell icon, give it a thumbs up and share it with all your ServiceNow buddies. Okay, so let's get cracking. In Flow Designer, we've already mentioned that we've got a couple of APIs that we can play with. So we've got a client side API, which is called GlideFlow, which is an awesome name. And we've got the server side API. So that's Flow API Scriptable Flow Runner. Again, I've done a previous video on that. We're not going to talk about that, but I just wanted to highlight it. Today, we're going to focus on GlideFlow. So in order to call our flows or subflows or actions from a client side, the specific actions that we need to do to make that available, consider it like a, a script include where you've got your checkbox that says client callable when you do a Glide Ajax. You wouldn't be able to access it via a Glide Ajax if you didn't do that, right? So it's the same thing. So what we need to do is we must make an individual flow or subflow in this case or actions available for client callable. Then we also have got to create a valid ACL in the, the managed security feature. And we're going to go through this. So there's two things that we need to do there. Arguably, there's a third thing where we need to apply that ACL to a specific person or a role, should I say, and then the role to a person. OK, so we're going to do all this. We've got some example methods here as well. So we call it using glide flow and we can do things like get execution start subflow, start flow, start action, okay? And there's some others. And what I'll do is I'll put the, the link to the API documentation in the description so you can go and check out the rest. Okay, so that's a brief overview. So now what we're gonna do is dive straight into the tool and we're gonna set this up and make this work. Okay, so we're in our instance of service now, and this is San Diego, by the way, and we're going to call a subflow using a client-side script. now. As we know, there's a few different ways we can do that. We can do that on a client script, through a UI policy on the scripting tab, um, or we could use a UI action. So for the previous video where I called it from a server side script, we used a UI action. So if we look at the screen here, top right, I called a UI action called trigger the flow over here. And that triggers the subflow and it sends a notification. I'll explain the flow in a, in a second. It's quite simple um, for the purpose of the demonstration. But I created a couple of new fields called color and emergency contact number. And essentially what it does is when you tri uh, click trigger the flow, it triggers a subflow and sends a notification out which uses elements of the input, which we'll see in a second. So it uses brown and emergency contact number to send a notification out. So let's have a quick look at the subflow while we're here. The subflow is this one, really simple. So we've got some inputs. Again, this is our input object. Each one of those is an attribute of that object that we're sending in. So we've got things like emergency contact number. We've just seen that field. Table name will be incident in our case. Unique ID will be sysid. Recipient will be the caller's um, email address and color. We've seen that drop down. So we take those inputs into the subflow when it was triggered by the UI action. We look up the record. We then send an, um, an email notification, which uses elements of um, what we've sent in the input. And then we assign some subflow outputs to say whether that sending of the email was successful or not. Really, really simple um, for the purpose of this demonstration. OK, so that was the subflow side. Now let's qu quickly take a look at the all action. And this is the UI action we used um, on the server side example. So if you notice, we haven't ticked client and we've got our script here. So let's copy this. I think that's what we'll do. Insert and stay. We'll call it client, shall we? And we'll give it a different color. Let's insert and stay that. We'll set the UI action up first. We'll call it um, client. If I can type, select the client select box. And for now, we're just going to remove everything on here. And we'll just save. So at the minute, what we've got is our new UI action, which is um, available for the client. 
and it should be a different color. So let's just go back here to the incident form, refresh and make sure it's on the screen for us. Okay, so we've got trigger the flow. I should rename that to server, shouldn't I? And then trigger the flow client. So now we've got our UI action. Let's go back to the flow and set that up. So now we're in our flow. If you remember, I said the main, one of the main difference for allowing us to be able to trigger this subflow, and you can do this with actions and flows as well, is that we need to set it up to be client callable. So we go the top right hand side, we've got the more actions menu. And we have, we don't want to do copy, um, create code snippet just yet. We go to manage security. So if we click on manage security, we now get callable by client API, which we can select. If we select that, it now asks us for an ACL. So we can go in there and we can select an ACL. But hang on, we can't select an ACL yet because we haven't set one up. So let's go and do that, okay? And we'll come back to this. So now what we need to do is go and create our ACL. So we'll head back over to the, the platform, go to ACL, but we can't create it yet, right? Because we need to elevate our security privileges to allow us to create an ACL. So let's just go back. Let's go to elevate roles, security admin, click OK. Now we've elevated our roles, we can go and create our ACL. So if we go back here and just refresh, we can create new. So what we're going to do is create new. And what we want to do is we want to look at the type. So you, you hopefully you've seen um, ACLs before and, and how we create them. But in here, now what we can do is say client callable flow object. Okay, so we need to select that, the type of client callable flow object, which automatically gives us operation execute um, in read only. All right, so the name, we can have a name for our ACL. We could just call it um, trigger the flow client, I don't know, test. Okay, let's just save that, lock that in. So when we do that, it adds the SNC internal role to the requires role. Now what we could do is we can create a whole new role. Um, I don't know what we'd call it, perhaps client callable trigger role. And you can assign that role to a group and therefore people or only people that can trigger a flow or subflow or action from a client side script, right? A bit more security in there for you. Given the fact that I'm admin and I've selected admin overrides up here, I'm not going to do that, but just be aware that you can do that. And that's perhaps a decision you need to make um, architecturally for the platform is do you want that level of security as well? I'd suggest yes, um, but for the purpose of this, we're going to leave that, just know it's there and we can add a new role in. So now we've created our ACL, we can go back to the flow. If I find it, here we go. We can click our more actions. We can go back to manage security. So we're back here again. Callable by client API, yes. ACLs, let's see what we can select now. We've got the trigger the flow client test. Okay, so that's this flow. And then we're gonna update that. Really important, if you try and call uh, a flow or a subflow or an action from a client side and you haven't done that, it's not gonna work. So top tip, if you're finding any issues and you've been debugging for hours, check that out, it's likely to be that. So now that we've done that, we can go back to more actions. We can go to create code snippet. Now this is a brilliant feature um, ServiceNow have given us and they, they give us something similar on the REST API Explorer as well, where you can get um, you know, the script for calling REST. But this is wonderful. We used it in the last video. We've got the server side script here at the top here and you can change it to client there, okay? If we hadn't have done the managed security section, we would have had an error along the top, okay? So when you come to copy the code, you will know whether you've done the managed security um, because it'll give you a little error at the top. So let's just take a, a brief look at this and see what the synergies are between the server side example that we used. So we've got the inputs. We've still got an input object, which is passing in attributes that we've, um, I've already called out and mentioned before. We've got glide flow, that's how we initiate and start subflow. That's the method we're going to use. We pass in the name of the flow itself and the inputs. So the name of the flow itself is this one and it's in the global namespace because I was lazy and I didn't create an application for it. So those are the main parts. That's how we call in the methods. 
Um, it does use um, a promise, which is a whole other video. So if you want to know about promises, um, I'll perhaps put some information in the description. But essentially, we're calling the subflow. We're waiting for it to execute. And the bottom here is where we get the outputs of that sub, uh, subflow. And we can get the status as well, which is useful. So let's copy that. Copy code snippet. We'll go back to the UI action we created. And we will simply pop it in there. So what we do need to do is make this UI action client callable, right? So I'm going to come up here, select the client tick box, which gives us that on click function. So we need to, to assign a function. So we're going to call it trigger flow. And we're going to remove the, the, the self invoking bit from the, the code snippet we got. So we're going to call it trigger flow or, or should we go function trigger flow. Let's see all the comments flooding in then. And we're just going to put that there. So now we've got our UI action, which is client callable. And we've got our function with the code snippet that we took from uh, Flow Designer. The thing that we're missing now is assigning the value to those attributes within the input object. So we've got color, emergency contact, table name. So we're going to need to use gform. This is client side, remember. We're going to go gform get value of the fields, the color, and emergency contact. We're going to use the standard method for getting the table name and the unique ID. And the recipient, I'm going to be a tad naughty. So rather than you watching me type that, I'm going to use the magic of video editing and I'm just going to um, get those on screen now. Ta-da! And, and by magic, I've completed the um, the setting of the values against those input attributes. So let's just have a quick look at what I've done. So you can see color there we've mapped to the color field on the form, the new field that I created, likewise with the emergency contact number. We're using the method to get the table name, the unique ID, and I've been a bit naughty here, right? I've hard coded the email address I want to send the notification to. The reason I've done that is because it's a reference field and on client side, you know, we could use glide Ajax, we could use get reference. That's a whole nother video that I've, um, I've already done actually, I've got two videos on glide Ajax, so I'll stick something in the description. But I wanted to, this, this to focus purely on calling the subflow. So bit naughty, slap on the wrists. You can uh, put some comments in um, to the video that that I'll um, perhaps ignore on this case, but you can put them in anywhere if you like. I've hard coded it in, naughty, point taken. Okay, so let's just save that. While we're doing that, actually, should we go and check we've saved the flow designer flow? Because um, that wouldn't go down too well, would it, if we hadn't saved it? So let's just go back here to the flow. The save's grayed out. Let's just go and check manage security. And yeah, we've got client callable ACLs. Okay, let's whiz back over. The one thing we could do actually on the UI action is we've got outputs here. So what we could do is we could add maybe, I don't know, should we add an alert for the result? So the intention here would be when we click the button, at least we'll see something straight away on screen um, that we can say has this run with the result. So it'll either be success or failure. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Let's just save that. Whiz, whiz back over to our incident, give it a refresh, and let's click the button. Okay, so we've clicked the button. We now got our success. There was a moment there where I thought it might say failure or nothing at all, um, but we got success, which is brilliant. That is the output of our flow that is sending back to that UI action. So let's just have a quick recap of what we've done. What components have we set up? We created a UI action, which we've made client callable. We've had a subflow where we've specified that it's client callable. We've created an ACL and linked it to that subflow to say this ACL has access to this subflow. We've also then tweaked the or stolen the, uh, the code snippet. Thank you, ServiceNow, for that. Put it in our UI action, and then we're, we're just simply putting an alert message on um, from the output so we can see something's happened. Okay, so if we dive back over to Flow Designer, we can go back to the executions. This is great as well. I love this. Execution, we can see this one. Send notification, update, and test. Um, test, send notification, and update. Um, and that worked how we expected it to work. So that answers the question, how do we call a subflow from a client script? But it also raises more questions than I think it answers because we can call 
flows or actions and subflows, all, all the stuff in Flow Designer, um, from server side script. And we now know we can call them from client side script. So that should start us thinking how we architect our platform as, as devs, as service nerds, is how we architect our platform and what the new standards are going forward. Uh, we all know ServiceNow wants to push towards this no low code um, kind of ethos. And we really need to start embracing that. And I know there is code involved. I get it, right? But is there a hybrid approach? Can we do everything on Flow Designer? Can we do everything drag and drop? Do we need to live in the past where we use script includes for everything? It depends who you ask. I'm a big fan of them. But maybe there's a hybrid approach that we need to start thinking of what the standards are across, um, I guess, each implementation you're doing because everything's going to be different. But it's definitely something to consider and have those conversations. So I hope you liked the video. I hope it's been useful. If you have liked it, give it the, the thumbs up, the like, the share. You know what to do. Um, but until next time, um, it's been great. Take care and I'll see you soon.